Gilead by Marilyn Robinson immediately became my favorite book when I read it. And I hope to express some of the reasons why as you watch me paint with watercolors. The tableau I'm painting isn't a specific scene from the book, but really more of an evocation of the spirit of the book. I'm trying to capture the peaceful, small town, bucolic setting, and the impression of observing boyhood with love and tenderness. As one of the predominant aspects of the book is our narrator, Reverend Ames, watching his young seven-year-old son grow and play. The book is actually written as a letter from Reverend Ames to his son. He comes to realize that he's going to die soon, and he writes this letter in lieu of raising the boy. It's all the conversations he would have wanted to have, all the family history he would have wanted to pass down, all his personal thoughts, so that his son can grow up one day and know who his father was, truly know him, truly feel connected to him. Except for a few big plot points, there's not much I can say to spoil this book for you, and no matter how hard I try to describe it, it will be nothing compared to the experience of reading Robinson's prose. What I was struck with immediately with this book was the ability of Marilyn Robinson to completely have me fooled into believing a 76-year-old pastor in the 50s wrote this book. It truly doesn't feel like fiction, and I mean that in the best possible way. It's set in the fictional town of Gilead, Iowa. Ames talks about the daily happenings of the slow, small-town life, his interactions with his best friend and neighbor who's also a pastor, watching his son play outside with the cat named Soapy. Of course, I had to add Soapy the cat to my painting. He talks about the sermons he still writes and preaches every Sunday, but he also goes back in his memories and we get to look at the lives of his father and his grandfather both of whom were also pastors, but represent very different takes on life. His father was a stoic man and a staunch pacifist. His grandfather was an eccentric with wild visions and an extreme abolitionist with no qualms about fighting for his convictions. Ames's description of his relationship with both his patriarchs is complicated, but also steeped in empathy and respect for both of their lives. Reverend Ames is a truly human character. He is righteous and godly, and he is constantly in prayer and looking for the morally right answer, but he struggles with his own forgiveness over something we slowly learn about over the course of the book, and that I don't want to spoil. So being a good person is not what defines him or makes him holier than thou or puts him on a pedestal. At his core, he's an old man who's experienced every emotion, heartbreak, pain, love, joy, restraint, compassion, forgiveness, and he thinks deeply and seeks truth about these things. Okay, pause. You might be wondering, Mallory, you said he had a young son and he is 76 years old? Yes. And in this day and age, immediate red flag, I know. But don't let that stop you from reading this, seriously. It covers how he met his wife, how he came to have such a young son, and in my opinion, it makes the book stronger. The juxtaposition of father and son, this old man finally having a child and getting to see the vitality, the playfulness of youth as he himself is completing the last years of his life. There's this extra sense of tenderness with which he watches and loves this boy, so new to the world. And through seeing his son, Ames is brought back many times to his own boyhood. It's moving and beautiful, and I know he's 76, he's 76, but it's okay, it's okay. As a reverend, Ames meditates often on the themes of religion and God. As a Christian myself, these passages honestly took my breath away. The thoughtfulness and depth with which he ponders theological ideas is actually inspiring and moving, more than I ever expected a fiction novel to be. But this book is not just for Christians, it's for anyone who wants to ponder these things. It's a glimpse into the mind of someone who has thought on God for his whole life and come to know him so intimately, yet is still exploring and questioning. It's fascinating and thought-provoking and undeniably beautiful, even if you don't agree with the foundation of his beliefs. And now, I really just want to leave you with a few of my favorite lines and passages from this book. I'm writing this in part to tell you that if you ever wonder what you've done in your life, and everyone does wonder sooner or later, you have been God's grace to me, a miracle, something more than a miracle. You may not remember me very well at all, 
it may seem to you to be no great thing to have been the good child of an old man in a shabby little town, you will no doubt leave behind. If only I had the words to tell you. I love this passage. What a beautiful notion for a child to know that they have accomplished something beautiful and profound just by existing. Like, what a way to think about being a child and having children. I hope to express this sentiment to my children when I have them. I feel sometimes as if I were a child who opens its eyes on the world once and sees amazing things it will never know any names for and then has to close its eyes again. I know this is all mere apparition compared to what awaits us, but it is only lovelier for that. There is a human beauty in it, and I can't believe that when we have all been changed and put on incorruptibility, we will forget our fantastic condition of mortality and impermanence, the great, bright dream of procreating and perishing that meant the whole world to us. In eternity, this world will be Troy, I believe, and all that has passed here will be the epic of the universe, the ballad they sing in the streets, because I don't imagine any reality putting this one in the shade entirely and I think piety forbids me to try. When I tell you I want this passage tattooed on my body, the book meditates on the beauty of life so much, and I think that this passage describing our earthly lives in comparison to heaven just captures that feeling that it has throughout the book. Life is beautiful and it means something, even if, as a Christian, you believe something better awaits us, when you look around at your life, it's impossible to think that it's all a big waste, that it means nothing. And I love that. Ashy biscuit, summer rain, her hair falling wet around her face. If I were to multiply the splendors of the world by two, the splendors as I feel them, I would arrive at an idea of heaven very unlike anything you see in the old paintings. Another meditation on heaven, but the prose just had my jaw on the floor. Okay, last one. Adulthood is a wonderful thing, and brief. You must be sure to enjoy it while it lasts. I love this. The reversal of the typical adage about childhood, I just, I love the idea of cherishing your adulthood as much as you cherish your childhood. Okay, I think I've said everything I wanted to say. I love this book with my whole heart, so please read it, and that's it.